All right, so that's the tanks, which is the majority, but it seems like these cryo pumps is kind of a critical part here, right? Yeah, so in terms of volume of the spacecraft, it's mostly fuel tank. In terms of hours of engineers <laughs> pulling their hair out, this little bit down the bottom is the majority that, of it. That's where most of the cost is, that's where most of the research is. Okay. So this is a difficult part. And these bits, the, the turbo pumps, are the, I mean, it's, it's a common joke in the field that a space flight is all about uh, turbo pumps. Oh, yes, with a rocket attached. Yes. <laughs> in terms of difficulty and getting it all to work, this is perhaps the most tricky thing in the entire part. The basic idea is that the fuel is not going to go out of the fuel tanks and into your rocket nozzle or combustion chamber anything like fast enough or a high enough pressure to do anything useful okay. unless you have a very powerful uh, pump. Okay. And these pumps, I mean the pumps, the turbo pumps in the Saturn V rocket for example would pump a backyard swing pool's worth of fuel every 10 seconds. That's a lot. <laughs> and they've got to pressurize it so the, the, f the, uh, yeah. the fuel comes in at a fairly low pressure, close to atmospheric pressure. Yes. Uh, but for example, for the Falcon engine on the, uh, on the uh, Falcon 9, it's pressurized up to 100 atmospheres, which is absolutely so, colossal pressure. So you, and you obviously, so you have to have a lot of pressure, you're pumping a lot of volume, and it has to be at a fairly reliable and constant rate, right? Because otherwise, as we talked about, problems in flows lead to problems in the combustion. Yeah, it's got to be a very even rate. You can't have it varying in rate because yeah. that would go a whole rocket juddering like crazy. So in, and how do you power this thing? I mean, the amount of energy consumed in this turbo pump is enormous. That's right. And you obviously don't want to add a lot more fuel or parts because that's just adding weight, which adds more. Uh, I mean, there are some small yeah. rockets that use batteries to power these yep. things, but the weight of batteries will soon become prohibitive. So in fact, these are rocket driven. Okay. So you have a, a small rocket called a gas generator, whose purpose is to power the pumps, to pump the fuel into the big rocket. Okay, so you have a mini rocket inside a big rocket, got it, all right. R yes, so, um, so they're powered by the small rocket, they're spinning at tens of thousands of revolutions per minute, and of course you've got it sitting there and then suddenly this cryogenic fuel comes in. Aye. And as you know, when you suddenly cool things down, that Th everything shrinks, which that's right. causes it to crack. Yep. And of course it might be liquid oxygen, which is highly corrosive. So it's a very difficult thing. And then you'll try to spin it at these enormous number of revs, which will tend to create cavitation, bubbles, yes. which can destroy the entire thing. Yep. Um, or you get pressurized gas leaking in unexpected directions. So it's an absolute nightmare. Okay. But the, the, the normal way this is done is what's called the gas generator cycle. This sort of powers the, uh, the Falcon engines. Okay. So what you do is you've got the fuel pump and the oxidizer pump, and they are on a share a shaft with a turbine. Yep. So what happens is you pressurize the stuff in these and then you bleed off a small part of the fuel in the oxidizer and burn it in this pre-burner. So you're taking the fuel that you already have for the rest of the rocket engine here yep. and pre-burning it. You pre-burn a small fraction of it yep. and that small fraction drives a turbine. So okay. you that, that, this is the mini rocket we were talking yeah, about that okay. fires the jet into the turbine which spins the turbine yep. and that's on the crankshaft to the two pumps. Yep. So that, now of course this is all kind of circular because you need the pumps before you get the pre-burner. Yes. So you need to get the started somehow and they might, for example, pump a bit of high pressure helium in to get it whirring. Okay. And then, and then once it's whirring, they can then get the whole thing to happen. That's right. So you start the pump, the pump goes with a little bit of the fuel, keeps going, which then pumps the actual fuel and oxidizer then into the combustion chamber. Yes, so this, this works. You've got this little this, uh, gas generator, the pre-burner, the little rocket that drives the pumps to pump everything else. And you can see the exhaust, this is again the uh, Falcon, yep. and that's the pre-burner, the uh, gas generator flow coming out. So, okay, so this is exhaust from that chamber up here yeah. that is then pumping to get into the main fuel here. Yes, and in fact they use this side thing to, it's, it's, it's a waste because this is not coming out as fast as the main fuel, so you've yep. lost some of your thrust that's right. to drive the cryo pumps, sorry, the turbo pumps. But you can actually use it to steer, and that's what they do in this situation. Ah, okay. Now for the latest uh, Raptor engine, which is uh, hopefully will work for the Starship, which is due to be launched sometime soon, honest. Yes. Uh, they're actually trying something even more complicated, what's called free, full flow stage combustion. Okay. So what happened here is you have our two pumps. Yep. And they're now not on one axis, they've got two. Yep, that's right. Um, so, and, and you have two turbines, as I see, instead of yes. the one in the center, yep. And what happens is you've now got two mini rockets. Oh, okay. And one of them burns and it doesn't just burn, you don't just bleed off some of your fuel, yep. you burn all the fuel with a little bit of oxidizer. Okay. So that means okay. you need, 
an equal match to burn it all. Yep. But you're because the match is uneven, most of it remains unburnt, but a small fraction is burnt. Okay. And on the other side, you burn large amounts of oxidizer with a with small, small amount yep. of fuel. Gotcha. So again, maybe five percent of it burns, and the rest just goes through, but it's already very hot. And that gives you a huge thrust to again drive the turbines that drives the whole pump. Ah, uh, okay. And then the exhaust from these goes into the combustion chamber. That unburnt stuff. Yes, but it's, it's already partially burnt. That's right. It's already a hot gas, which actually means you don't need to ignite anything oh, here because you're yes. squirting the two hot plumes of not quite combusted gas together. Which then heated combusts here. So they're trying to make it more efficient and obviously generate more thrust here to come out over here. As they have a higher volume of gas going through here, that means that it makes it easier to design the, the yep. turbo pump because the turbo pumps are often what burn out and fall to pieces. Yep. And they want to be able to reuse these tens or hundreds of times. Exactly, so that's trying right. to build something that doesn't have such a severe strain on it yep. is an important part of their design. And here it is, actually firing. <laughs> so it hasn't yet put anything into space, but, but we, it does fire in the test stands and it's done little hops, hops. up and down. And I think about only hope, like 10 meters or so now. But we yes. hope that by the time you watch this, they will have actually succeeded in launching something into space. Exactly. Or at least getting part way up and then blowing up. It's, uh, Which is imminently, so hopefully that does look like old news to you already.